There was a judge by the name of Laurie Landry. Now she's out of Louisiana in the 16th judicial district. Now she was a former prosecutor herself and she was noticing the prosecutors doing a lot of foul things to get black defendants locked up. So she started calling things out that they were doing saying it was practicing trickery. And when these prosecutors was hearing her say this, calling them out for their foul behavior, trying to get black defendants locked up. They wanted to make her recuse herself. They filed a complaint on 300 different cases that's going to be coming up before her. Let's go ahead and roll this clip. The judge is not going to be sanctioned or silenced by a system mm -hmm. that has proven not to be just. A sea of people left the courtroom filled with standing room only after a judge decided they needed more time to review Landry's case. It's despicable that just because the district attorney can't get their way that they're going to decide, well, we're going to we want you to be removed like he has that much power. The motions filed by the 16th JDC District Attorney's Office claim Landry is prejudiced and shows a bias against the prosecutors in the DA's office. When they're removing her right. as a judge right. that you said to. Khadija Rashad is one organizer of the rally and is starting a petition. People uh, believe and support Judge Landry because of her integrity, because of her willingness to look at the evidence, and if there is no evidence, then the case is dismissed. United, hand in hand, the group believes the hearing was only postponed because of their support. Donald Thompson says they elected Landry as a judge to serve the people and not the DA's office. We will not allow the deceptive and evil and wicked practices of this system and this district attorney's office office to remove our sister from any case. Now, as you heard, they want this judge removed from these cases. She has stated about these prosecutors that they was having improper motivations to incarcerate black people more severely and a higher rate, even though black people only represent 30% of the population in the majority white parishes in Louisiana of St. Martin, Iberia, and St. Mary. So you have a small population of black people, but yet the prosecutors want to make sure they lock up many as possible. This so-called criminal justice system has been set up that way from the beginning. Lock up black people. Why you want to lock up black people? The 13th Amendment. The 13th Amendment of this Constitution of the United States tells you, yes, you can't have slavery, but then it says, except for crime and punishment. See, America haven't known a day without slavery. It still has slavery to this day. And that's the reason why the majority of black men are locked up in jail is because they want you to be a slave. You understand that? And no one, not your Democrat friends, not your Republican friends, those of you who walk around talking about Republican is better and, and you got a free mind, not your Republican friends or anyone else is saying, hey, we need to delete that portion of the Constitution that gives an out to have modern day slavery. And let me talk to black folks here for a minute too. Some of y'all, we talking about you know, connecting with the continent, making visits and, and doing whatever you want to do. They are having an Africa plan. Some of you open your mouth to say that they sold us in the slavery field. So I can't, I can't even go over there. They sold us. First of all, nobody, nobody sold you nothing. You were born here. That's first and foremost. So stop with that. S another thing, those people have been dead hundreds and hundreds of years ago. There was a small portion of people that did participate in the slave trade who were part of those tribes. That's well known now. Everyone knows that. You just looking for a reason to be pissed off at black folks. You got all this hating energy talking about somebody sold you, like that's how it all happened. But the fact is when you was given to the white man by the Arabs too, which you don't have all this hate for Arabs, because Arabs was trading slaves way before even the white man was doing it. So you'll have no, ha no hatred and, and venom for Arabs and you don't even have it for the white man. He sold you too. 
he sold you to and from all through America as slaves. But you don't have that venom at all for them. And on the books of the constitution, you still have slavery and you yet you still got more venom for people that's been dead for well over 400 years on the continent than those who still trading slaves. Now, every time they build a jail, that's a new plantation for the black man to be in, but you don't have no venom about that, but you're mad about somebody that's been dead hundreds of years ago that you didn't even know. You can't identify which ones did it. So backwards because you've been trained by your de facto white daddy to hate black people by all costs, hate black people, find a reason to hate black people. Even though the chiefs in Ghana came out and said, yes, they participated and they apologized. We are very privileged to be with you, particularly our brothers and sisters from the Caribbeans and the diaspora. And the people from all over Africa, our brothers and sisters from all over Africa. I wish at this point to particularly to apologize deeply on behalf of the chiefs and people of Gold Coast and Ghana for the atrocities the cruelty, the inhuman treatment that were committed 400 years ago by my ancestors during the Atlantic slave trade. Where over 400 years ago, millions of our brothers and sisters were captured, sold and transported under inhumane and cruel circumstances through Elmina Castle across to the Caribbeans and to the New World. On behalf of the chiefs and people of Ghana, I do render unqualified apology deep from the bottom of our hearts deep from our bottom of our hearts but one thing that I want you to be aware of it was not without resistance some of our chiefs did fought and resisted some of our people did fought and resisted but we are fighting a losing battle against a stronger army. People with guns, and we had no guns. They deceived us with liquor and all other temptations. Whatever the circumstances that led us to us, we stand here to render apology. And it's my wish and prayer that this apology is accepted. It's accepted yes. Yes. deep by our brothers and sisters from the diaspora. And I saw the video when they did it. You look for any old reason to have hate for somebody else black. But these folks have you still enslaved in the, in the plantation and ruin your life in the process. Now this judge is trying to, trying to stop all this trading of slaves that's legal by the 13th amendment. And he want to stop her from doing this. Just like when they had the brother by the name judge Olu Stevens, when he was noticing that those prosecutors were only putting white juries and he was like, Hey, wait a minute. You can't make these juries with no black people. No, no diverse juries What's going on. And he had dismissed the jury that they picked and wanted a more diverse jury. And they complained on him and got him suspended. Every time you have a black judge or police officer or whoever that take a stand for the community, 
This is how they act because this system is built that way. You understand the system isn't built for black people to have justice. It's not, it's built for black people to have injustice. It's built for black people to be enslaved, oppressed. This system is designed that way. And this judge is violating the rules. There's a rule when black people get in politics, law enforcement, uh, uh, judges, DA, whatever. The two rules is this. You can't help black people. You can't punish white folks. You can't. You violate any one of those two rules, you're out of there. Or something's going to happen. May you not be out of there, but they're going to punish you to get you back in line. That's really the rules in America. And know your Democrat friends are not going to come to this woman's aid. And let me tell you about Louisiana, Louisiana. Oh, y'all talk about Texas. <laughs> Louisiana is, oh man, the things, how they treat black people, in Louisiana and some of those areas. I'm telling you, you got some places in Louisiana. I mean, they are worse of the worst. At least in Texas, I, you know where that's at for the most part. And if you also stick to the bigger cities where everyone's at, you can kind of avoid that. It's like you got some places in East Texas and all them little places like that, that, that black folks, I don't know why black folks be in these areas. I don't know why, but, but they do. And, 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 and I don't know for me, I can't be around people like that. I gotta be in places where it may be just a little better. I know in America, we all living under oppression, but Louisiana is a special entity, very, very special entity. How do you jail brothers over there in Louisiana? The prosecutors claim this judge cannot be fair to them. See, it's not being fair to them when you're telling them you can't just railroad black people this way. You can't do that because I know what you're doing. That's not being fair. Being fair to them is, is, is just locking black people up for a long time. Just locking them up, ruining their lives, putting felonies on their records. So they can't vote anymore. You get what I'm saying? Even think about what I just said about felonies. So think about it, that quote unquote felony and the way they handle it. You know, it was rooted in racism, white supremacy. You can't vote and you can't own a gun. That's two things that, that this system never wanted black people to do was vote and have a gun. It wasn't meant to do anything else. How is it with a felony? What is a vote going to do? Why can't a person vote in an election? A vote is something that's peaceful. A vote is something that doesn't hurt anybody. So, you know, all that was rooted in racism and white supremacy, every bit of it. These are the things that we need to talk about and expose a little bit more. The systems that's in place. You know, some of y'all tell me, when we talk about Africa, we, why y'all want to run? We need to fight. You fight nothing because you've proven to me you fight something when I see you trying to have a mass movement to erase the slavery clause in the 13th amendment. Then I can start believing that you're fighting. Show me you're fighting when you're trying to get uh, people that have felonies, their voting rights back and their gun rights. Matter of fact, no one should be penalized with their voting rights and their gun rights. Nobody. If you've done your debt to society, then everything especially should return. Now you should never lose your voting rights for no reason, none, because it's the most peaceful thing you can do is vote. See, show me that you're trying to fundamentally change America and not be in the comment sections telling me anything. I'm talking about you. I see you in the street. I see you making differences in your city, in your state, getting these things changed. Then I'll believe you're fighting to make a difference because all the fighting you're doing is just online and in the comment section. And I don't have time to watch another generation of people go down, get old, get sick, be, be killed and jailed and everything else. When I can see there's a better option. We can't, you know, I'm just beyond with you. We can't sit here and keep having these things happen. Judges trying to do what's right and they get, getting treated bad. Then you want to attack other black people for saying, Hey, why don't you go to the African nation to see what they offer? Just go see it. And you mad talking about why are you running? If you y'all who's these quote unquote fighters go fight for this judge. Then show me that you're fighting. Put that, put that hope back in me that about y'all fighting. I want to see it.
This is a good opportunity to show that you're fighting. Right here with this judge, George Lori Landry out of the 16th Judicial District uh, in Louisiana. And they're over uh, St. Martin, Iberia, and St. Mary. Show me that. Now, they have some people out there, but it should have been more people out there. Not that small amount of people. That's what I'm talking about. You always have a small group of people trying to fight everything, trying to do everything. That's my issue and problem. Online, everybody talking, but why don't you out there with them? Why don't you trying to make a stand? Where's all these groups at coming in to, to fight and defend? That's what I'm talking about. Fight for this sister. But leave me a comment, let me know what you think about this particular story with Judge Lori Landry. I'm interested to see what's going to happen out of this. I, I have a feeling what's going to happen, but let's just wait to find out what the information is going to be.